Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Stukas. I'm a professor of clinical pediatrics, a board certified allergist and immunologist, and I'm also a member of the Medical and Scientific Council for the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Can you test positive for, for a food allergy, but not be allergic? Absolutely. Uh, this is why food allergy tests were never intended to be screening tests. The food allergy tests that we use detect an immunoglobulin, otherwise known as an antibody, called IgE. And IgE is involved in the allergic response towards foods. The problem is a lot of people can find IgE towards foods if you do skin testing or blood testing, but they're not actually allergic. There are many reasons for that. Sometimes the IgE is binding to a food on the assay that we use because that food looks like something that person is allergic to in the environment. For instance, we know that people with birch tree pollen allergy, which can cause itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, runny nose in the spring months, uh, can cause false positive testing to peanut. So we really want to use these tests when a clinical history supports a diagnosis of food allergy, and we rely on you. So people come to us and they say, every time I eat this food, no matter what form, within a few minutes or up to one or two hours later, I develop these symptoms such as big red itchy hives or swelling or itching or rashes or vomiting or anaphylaxis. If you're eating a food and not having those symptoms, you're not allergic to that food. That's the best test. If you are experiencing those symptoms, then talk to your doctor, talk to an allergist about what testing may be indicated for you. But just because you have a positive test does not mean that you're actually allergic. And it always has to be interpreted within the context of the clinical history. Can you test negative for a food allergy, but actually be allergic? Ne false negative test results can occur, but they're pretty rare, thankfully. So especially when somebody doesn't have a very good history of having reactions to foods, we tend to believe our negative test results on both skin testing and blood testing. The gold standard to diagnose food allergy or to rule it out is the oral food challenge. So when the clinical history is indeterminate or the testing is indeterminate, or we, we have somebody with known food allergy and we feel that they may have developed tolerance over time through repeat testing, the best test is to have a supervised graded oral food challenge where you eat gradually increasing amounts of the food in the presence of an allergist. If no symptoms occur after you've ingested the predetermined serving size, then it's very unlikely that you're allergic to that food and you can include it in your diet. So if you have concerns about food allergy and you have a negative test, please talk about next steps with your allergist. On the flip side, if the history is not very suggestive for food allergy, either because somebody's never knowingly eaten a food or experienced a reaction to a food, and we have a negative test result, then yes, we should believe those results almost all the time. Is one allergy test better than another? Well, yes and no. Both skin prick tests and blood tests uh, look for the presence of an IgE allergy antibody. Both of these tests um, are reliable when used in the context of a proper clinical history. So the best test is really the story that you provide to your allergist. We want to know things like what symptoms you have. Are those symptoms reproducible upon exposure to your suspected trigger or allergen? Are those symptoms consistent with what we would determine to be an allergic reaction? If the clinical history suggests that you do have allergies, then skin testing and blood testing are both reliable to help confirm the presence of allergies or rule out allergies when we don't suspect that allergies are the cause. Now, these tests have limitations. Both skin tests and blood tests have high rates of false positive results. So we really want to pick and choose what, what things we test for very carefully based upon the history. Neither skin tests or blood tests were ever designed to be used as screening tests. We can't just test for everything and kind of see what comes back and then diagnose allergy by that. Neither skin test nor blood test can predict the severity of future reactions. They can only be used to determine the likelihood that allergy is present. But we do have an, a gold standard test when people have concerns about food allergy. So if you really have concerns about food allergy and your testing is indeterminate, the oral food challenge is the gold standard. It's a very safe way to learn more about how your body's immune system responds to a food. You eat gradually increasing amounts of that food under supervision. If no symptoms occur after eating a set amount of food, then you're not allergic to that food because allergies cause an immune response. Therefore, every time you're exposed to that, you should have reproducible symptoms. So it's really important to understand how tests are best utilized, but most importantly, we always start with the best test available, which is you. What's your story? What's your clinical history? What's the deal with at-home do-it-yourself allergy test kits? 
Well, that's a great question. So um, if you've looked at some other clips that we have in regards to the, the role of allergy tests, then you've likely heard me say that allergy tests are not screening tests. When you go to see your allergist, they should not be placing a bunch of allergy tests on you or ordering a bunch of allergy tests, then picking and choosing what results come back to diagnose allergy. The diagnosis of allergy should always start with a very detailed clinical history. What are your symptoms? What's the recurrence of your symptoms upon exposure to the allergen? Is that consistent or worrisome for allergy? If your history is suggested for allergy, then allergy tests can be obtained um, to help confirm or, to, or rule out the presence of allergy. With at-home allergy tests, it's backwards. They actually screen for a bunch of allergies, but these tests were never designed to be used as screening tests. If those results from an at-home test come back negative, they're likely reliable and we can believe that allergy isn't present. But if they come back quote unquote positive, we absolutely have to question the validity of it because we get high rates of false positive results. So we always recommend extreme caution in ordering any type of panel testing, especially when it's done at home without proper evaluation first.